Hey everybody, hello, welcome to the class. How are you tonight? I hope everything is fine and I hope you had a very good Wednesday. And uh, well, as I was telling you before, uh, we are going to check about the platform. Probably that is the best way. As I was telling you before, uh, we need to finish the unit number two and the midterm test. So this is the class of tonight. And we need to finish the homework 2.11. That is for you just to click the correct option. Uh, for these exercises, uh, it's very important that we uh, be careful, okay? Uh, be careful on what we're going to, to type because sometimes if a symbol is not the correct one or if you leave a space, a blank space, uh, it's not going to take it. Or for example, if you uh, don't put the period, and it's needed the period, uh, it's not going to take it. So these exercises, we need to be very, very careful. And uh, once we finish that exercise, of course we can go and submit that one, okay, here. And once you finish that one, we need to also finish the 2.14, which is this part, okay. Also, we have another part here that is, for you to uh, enter some. All these exercises where you are going to enter um, words, we need to be careful with the spaces, with symbols, with the period, so you can check into that. And remember that once you finish that, you can move on and go to the medium test, which is this one. This one has four parts. In this one, in the first part, we have three questions here, and also we have here this one for you to create sentences. Again, we need to be careful. There are only two. And remember to finish that one and go to part number two, which is this one, okay? Five questions. And then we go to part number three, which is this one, okay? And then we go to part number four, which is uh, this one, okay? Also here we have uh, to enter some things, okay? So uh, we need to finish that on the weekend. It's very important that on the weekend, everybody finishes uh, unit two and uh, the midterm test, okay? Very, very. Do you have any questions about that? No. Very good, perfect. Okay, so um, I don't know if it's raining there where you are. It is like pouring rain. Do you know what is pouring rain? No, teacher. Está pringando. So when you say it's pouring rain, it's like está pringando. So a little bit, not a lot of rain. Okay. And... Poor the pobre. Uh huh. I will. I will put that on the chat. Let me just check. Pouring rain. So we can say it's pouring rain. So it's raining a little bit, not raining that much. Okay. Uh, I see that a lot of people that are missing. Let me see if they have some problems. Uh no, I don't see anything. Okay, good. Perfect. So we're going to start the class off tonight, but before that one, we're going to check the attendance as usual. So Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Perfect. Good. Blanca Isabel Junaca de Rodriguez. Eric Enrique Reyes Martinez. Present coach. Good. Ernesto Jose Andrade Medina. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Here, teacher. Good. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Good luck. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Good. 
José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Good evening, I'm here. Very good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Very good. A María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidoni. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Perfect. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. <clears throat> Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Present teacher. Good. Victor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. Present teacher. Good. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present teacher. Very good. Okay, Jose Alfredo, I got you. Nice. I hope that fixes so we can participate. Okay. Very good. So we're going to start the class. Um, this is the week of the video. So we're going to watch a video and then you're going to tell me what you understand about this. Okay. So. Uh, let's check about some errors that people or companies do when marketing. Uh, as usual, we're going to check pronunciation on people, the accent, how fast they speak, vocabulary, and what you understand. Teacher. Yes. Ah, okay. Ah, que tenía problemas con mi micrófono. Creo que por eso no me escuchó. Very good. But I got you. That, that's good. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Present. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're going to watch the video and at uh, the end, you are going to provide opinions or comments on what you understand, okay? So here we go. Just checking this here and here. All right, here we go, my friends. Hi, remember that old saying that failing to plan is planning to fail? Well, I can't give you quite as symmetrical one about testing, so I'll say it really simply. If you're not testing, you're not improving. But tests can not only fail, they can actually tell you lies. And today I want to share with you the six tips that I've learned to avoid those errors in testing. The first failure is easy. Failing to test. At all. Think about the things that you do really often, like email sends, the home page of your website, or any other really busy page on your website, landing pages, ad groups, social media posts, retargeting ads in their landing pages. If you're not measuring these things, how are you improving them? For every one of those high volume activities, there should be at least two versions duking it out one of them will turn out to be better than the other, and it's often not the one that you think. The next error or failure is really common, and that is confusing the source of the change. Quick example, this is a common example. I send, I, I've got an email that I'm sending out every month, and I've got two versions of the email. One's really long form, and one's really short form, because I'm trying to work out whether long or short form works better. So I send out the long form one, one month, and the short form one the next month. The short form one gets a much better response and I conclude that short is better than long. Or should I conclude that month one is better than month two? Or should I conclude that never send out an email when there's a big sporting event on? So many other variables could have explained why one of those worked and the other one didn't. So what you need to do is to clinically separate so that there's nothing else different. It's a random split. They go out at the same time to the same list. Um, this person, this person, this person, this person. So you, you're splitting the list up, but you're randomizing that split and that nothing else is different other than the length of the copy in that example. 
Well, the third trap is that small numbers tell lies. I'll give you a silly small example. Let's say that we've got a really small list of high quality candidates, high quality targets, and we send email version A to 20 of them and email version B to 20 of them. Version A gets two responses and version B gets only one response. Can we conclude that version A is better than version B? No, because it so easily could have been the case that the companies that we sent version A to just turned out to be better prospects. With such small numbers, those kind of variabilities really easily sneak in. Can also be really situational. Imagine yourself, you've just received an email that you weren't expecting and mostly you're going to delete them. But every now and then you read one and that's partly a function of whether you're busy at that point in time. And so you're exposing yourself to whims. Can we not though just conclude that if version A got two responses and version B got only one, that there's some kind of directional indicator there that very possibly version A is better and that maybe we might think that version A is better? Not on your life. But for a whim, version B might have come in with four and version A might have come in with one and you'd have concluded completely the reverse. Not only is that not clear proof, it's not even an indicator at those small numbers. Small numbers tell lies. Those first three were fairly easy and not that controversial. Let me go now, this is going to sound geeky but it's so, so, so critical. Don't confuse failure of the test with proof of failure. Let me explain. You form a view that you can improve something in a material way and you run a test to do that. The test doesn't come back with a result that you can believe. Maybe the results are the same or they're so close that you really can't believe the differences. So certainly the test failed. But did it also prove that that difference doesn't work? Maybe let's go with our long form, short form example. So maybe the test was long form versus short form and we failed to find a difference, therefore we proved that there is no difference in length. That's a really different um, onus of proof. If we're trying to really prove that long form and short form doesn't matter, we probably want to run that test 100 times, or 50, or 20, but not once. We ran it once and we failed to prove that we could get an improvement. We did not prove that you can't get an improvement. Big, big, big difference. So if you want to lock in a learning, the learning would be that test failed. Not we've proven that length of copy doesn't matter. Because if you really want to prove that length of copy doesn't matter, that's a very different test than the test we set out with. I know that sounds kind of geeky and maybe even pedantic, but it's critical that you draw the right conclusions from your tests. And failure to prove is a perfectly okay outcome. Just acknowledge that it's failure to prove. We tried to prove that long form is better than short form. We failed on this occasion. That's okay. Maybe you'll run the test again and have another shot. Maybe you'll run it a third time and have another shot. You didn't prove that it didn't work. You failed to prove that it does work. And that's a really important difference. Okay, that fourth one was a little bit pedantic. This fifth one is going to sound a little bit theoretical, not so much pedantic, but it's important as well. Let me quickly explain what it is and then defend it a bit. Putting a test together without a hypothesis is a waste of time. Version A of your email, version B of your email, version A1, what did you learn? Well, you learned that version A worked. What generalizable conclusions did you learn? Well, I don't know. I think that it was because that was longer or shorter uh, or more assertive or less assertive. I think, but maybe I don't really know. If you run a test without a hypothesis, you don't get a clear generalizable conclusion that you can put in the bank. It's not hard to change that. Start with your hypothesis. 
I think I can improve this by this amount if I do this thing. That's your hypothesis. I think that I can improve this outcome by this amount by doing this action. Then build a test that proves or disproves that hypothesis. Now you've got a generalizable conclusion. The generalizable conclusion is long beats short for my audience, or frequent beats infrequent, or aggressive beats passive, whatever your test was. But start with your hypothesis. I think I can improve this by this amount by doing this action. For example, I think I can improve open rates by 10% by using more assertive copy in the headline. Start with the hypothesis, then build your test, then you measure. Okay, so we've got five common errors in A-B testing for marketing so far. Failing to test, confusing the cause, small numbers telling lies, confusing proof with failure, and testing without a hypothesis. Now, number six, lacking an overall context for the processes that we're trying to improve. Let me explain. So the sixth and final error is lacking a context for our testing. What tactics came before the one that we're testing? What tactics are going to come after? Strategically, which market are we marketing to? What are we offering to that market? What problem are we trying to solve for that market? You need to know all of those questions so that you can do each of the tactics really well. And the all of those things, the strategy and the tactics, that's the job of funnel plan. Now, if you already have a funnel plan, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, go get one. Go to funnelplan.com, check out what we're talking about there. Funnel plan is a way of building your overall sales and marketing process, the sales and marketing together. It's not a marketing plan, it's not a sales plan, it's a sales and marketing process map, and that's the job of funnel plan. If you haven't got one, go get one at funnelplan.com. Well, I hope you got lots of value out of today's video. I had fun putting it together for you. I've got lots more lined up for our next show, and until, until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing. Our thanks this week to you for watching this week's show, to Nick Steffens for blog production, Amy Dethick for video production. My name's Hugh McFarlane and it's been my absolute pleasure to have scripted and recorded today's show. Okay, so what did you get from the video? That is the question. Okay, go ahead, Juan Roberto. Uh, what is the meaning of whim? Of whim? The meaning of? Whim, or W-H-I-M. Let me just type it so to see. Okay. All right, let me see. I do say W. W H I M. Emma in Mary. Ah, okay. Yeah, that is like uh, capricho, antojo, something like that. Okay. Good, perfect. Okay, and do you have any comments? Uh, what did you understand yes. from the video? Uh -huh. I am. It's a, uh, it's a important for 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 organization is is a is is a um common error is a, is not is not is your uh, testing testing the product uh for is important for 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 a, a different different type of tip, the testing is a uh, uh, is a como se llama is is a como da a las a las empresas eh, 
un, de como los ítems o los parámetros eh, del, del estado, del stage, de the oh, opposition, the product in the market. Very good. So that is one of the errors, the, of the common errors that companies do. So they don't test. So they just sometimes design the product, hire a team for uh, the production, another team for the marketing. But you don't know exactly if that works. It's just an idea. So they need to test the, uh, the product so they understand better what they can do so they can approach to customers, right? Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, yes, comment? uh, teacher. Yeah. Uh, I understand it's very important uh, making testing uh, in marketing, yeah. but it's, uh, it's necessary for uh, the measure, medición, así se dice, measure, measure? Okay. Measure, yeah. Measure. Yeah. Measure, e, but uh, uh, if no testing, is very probably you're falling. Uh, I understand. Uh, is is true? No, not only in the marketing. Uh, I think you see the all the projects uh, when mark making project or uh, of the construction of the uh, production etc. Is, uh, is necessary everything uh, make testing. Definitely. Testing is one of the most important things. I mean, uh, you cannot, you cannot sell a product that you don't believe, right? That is very true. So you need to understand, you need to test it, you need to have it and use it so to check if that is working properly, right? So it's something very, very, Yes, I understand. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments or opinion? Okay. Very good. So we are going to continue with the book. Let's see how it goes. Uh, before that one, for Friday, we are going to have a homework. Okay. The homework is that you are going to present a commercial. You are going to, to do an advertisement of a product, okay? Like a commercial or anything like that. Uh, you can just tell the commercial, you can create a presentation, a document, a video, whatever you want. So that is going to be for this Friday. Any product that you want to do the commercial for, uh, that would be, okay? Any questions with the homework? Okay, so we are still in unit number two, marketing. How to use enough to modify adjectives. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh -uh -um. Silvia, Patricia. Okay, look at the example in the box. Then complete the exercise below. And now, as an adverb means to the, to the necessary degree, and now all of the adjectives it modifies. It can be used both in positivity and negative sentence. The look of your online course from page is not professional and out. The package is user friendly and out. Their product design is not competitive now for a high end market. In or after some service are good enough to improve the positioning of our products. Very good, perfect. So it says how to use enough to modify adjectives. Uh, do you remember what is enough? Suficiente. Very good. That is it. so enough as an adverb means to the necessary degree. Exactly what you said, right? Enough. And, and this is an adverb. And it's going to modify 
uh, adjectives. So remember that the adjectives are the ones that modify or describe a noun. And uh, enough is going to describe the adjective. So, and there are uh, some explanations here. It says, enough uh, follows the adjective it modifies. So enough is after the adjective. First is the adjective and then is the word enough. It can be used both in positive and negative sentences, okay? So it can be something that is nice or is good or something that is not good enough. So for example, the look of your online course front page is not professional enough. In this case, uh, since this is negative, it means that it needs more professionals, right? So it's not enough. So it's a negative context. The other one says, the package is user-friendly enough. What is package? Do you remember? Paquete. Very good. And what is user-friendly? User-friendly in those... No sé qué significa. User-friendly es... Como manejable, como manejable. Es amigable con el usuario. Very good. Amigable con el usuario. It means that it's very easy to use. It's not complicated. Okay. Uh, the other one says their product design is not competitive enough for a high end. So you can see that you can use that at the end of the sentence or in the middle, right? Not a problem. Uh, our after sales services are good enough to improve the positioning of our products. So our, what is after sales services? What do you understand that one? Después de las ventas. Servicio después de ventas. So these are like the services, for example, do you remember that I was telling you? So when you go to La Plaza, for example, and you mm -hmm. buy a refrigerator, for example, uh, they tell you, you can buy five years of extended work. So that is the after sell services. And it says our after sell services are good enough to improve the positioning of a product. So remember that it's going to be the adjective and then enough to describe. If it's negative context, we can use that in negative or in positive as well. Uh, do you have any questions with this grammar? No. Okay. So let's do exercise number five. It says describe the mobile brands below using an adjective and enough. So we're going to do four sentences. If you want to do more, that is possible. Uh, one for LG, another for Sony Xperia, one for the iPhone, and one for Samsung. And we're going to use enough and, of course, an adjective to describe that. Do you have questions about the activity? No, teacher. Okay. I will give you a few minutes for you to do the exercise.
Okay, so let's check. Uh, who wants to share for LG the example? Uh, me, teacher. Perfect. Go ahead. LG Mobile is is strong enough to support drops for more than three meters high. That is a very good example. Very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Who wants to tell the example for Sony Xperia? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. In my time, Sony cell phones have enough sound to organize a meeting with friends. Very good. That is fine as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. What about the iPhone? Who wants to provide an example with iPhone? Mm -hmm. Anybody? iPhone N enough. Anybody? The iPhone is enough positioned brand in the in the market. Which is why Apple has uh, a strong position as on the best, the best company in the United States. Okay, yeah, the idea is good. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if I listen enough. Do you use enough? Suficiente. I have, but in the example that you tell. Uh, it's a. It's a, it's a como, um, podríamos decir, novedoso. Oh, you can say then, uh, iPhone is novelty enough. Novelty enough. Okay. So the iPhone has, or oh, is novelty enough. So people continue buying that one. They are going to launch the 15, I guess. <laughs> Ah, uh, perfect. I don't know. Okay, who wants to tell the example for Samsung? The Samsung mobiles are available enough because we can find them in many places. And uh, the word enough, where where do you use that one? Available enough. Ah, very good. I didn't listen. Perfect. Thank you. Available enough. Yeah, Samsung is, I, I really like Samsung is my favorite brand of phones. Some people prefer iPhones in the United States and Canada. People are crazy about the iPhones, probably because yeah. of the camera and many other things. But for me, Samsung is good enough and the price is, is nice. Perfect. Any question about this exercise? Okay, no. so let's... Uh, perfect. Let's do the exercise number six then, building vocabulary. Uh, let's see. Um, Eric Reyes, could you please help me reading all the charts? 
of course. Uh, building vocabulary. Match the words or expressions to their meaning meanings. Number one, product design. Uh, number two, after sales service services. Number three, brand. Number four, features. Number five, product positioning. And um, the letter, um, the option is the process of creating an image of a product in the minds of the customers. Uh, the use of a name, term, symbol, or design to give a product a unique identity, identity I think in the marketplace. Uh, characteristics of a product that describe its appearance, components, and capabilities to create a new product to be sold by a businesses business businesses to its customers and the last is the help and information that is provided to customers after they have bought a particular product very good so that is it and this is the build the vocabulary exercise so i'm going to give you also a few minutes for you to check uh, any word that you don't understand and then uh, match everything to that one. This is going to be very fast, I guess. So I will give you a couple of minutes on that one and then we're going to check. Okay, so let's check. It's going to be uh, product design. What do you think is going to be the answer for that? We create an, a new product to be sold by a business to its customer. Very good. To create a new product to be sold by a business to its customers. Nice. After sales services, what do you think is that? The help and information that is provided 
to customer after they have bought a particular product. Very good. The help and information that is provided to customers after they have bought a particular product. What about brand? The use of name terms symbol of design to give a product a unique identify in the marketplace. Very good. The use of a name, term, symbol, or design to give a product a unique identity in the marketplace. What about features? Characteristic. The process of creating images of a product in the minds of the cons consumers. Mm, actually, that is the other one, the one that he was saying, I guess, Eric, Eric uh, was saying, Characteristics of a product that describe its appearance, components, and capabilities. So that would be exactly for future. For, for features, uh huh. Okay. And what about product positioning? The process oh. ready. Uh, I'm sorry. So that is, uh -huh. go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, it's going to be that the process of creating match of product of the minds of the customer. Very good. The process of creating an image of a product in the minds of the consumers. Perfect. Do you have any questions here? Cinco, tres, cuatro, dos. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, it says label the examples of the of elements found in a product uh, strategy using the questions from the box. So this is an exercise where, according to the answer, we're going to do we're going to put the question in the correct one. Okay, the question says, "How will you distribute your product? Who are you selling to?" What value do you provide your customers? What are you selling? How will you price your product? And then the answer says, we build quality kitchen hardware for residential kitchen customers. Uh, do you remember what is kitchen, of course, right? What is kitchen? Cocina. Very good. And hardware, what is hardware? Oh, hardware. Um... The yeah, it's like the, the material thing that you can do, right? That you can build. The number two says our customers are young North American families who want kitchen hardware that can stand the wear and tear of young children. Uh, what is stand here in this one? Detenido, parado, no sé. Okay. The pie, the pie. All right. Okay. In this case, actually, stand is different. It's a, a different verb. When you say I can stand, this is together. Can stand together is que pueda soportar. For okay. example, if somebody, yeah, for example, if somebody is telling you some things and you don't like the things that okay. they're doing, uh, okay. in English, it's very common that people say I can't stand in negative, can't. I can't stand that one. No lo puedo soportar. So in this case, que pueda soportar. So that would be. The wear and tear. Uh, okay, so wear and tear is like the usage. I mean, the usage, in this case, of young children. So that would be it. Number three says they are interested in materials that are mm, safe for safe children. For and eco-friendly, okay? Uh, what is eco-friendly? Ecologicamente amigable. Very good. That would be. And uh, the number four says we sell our products through a retail channel. So we know that is a retail channel, right? Distribution part. And in the other one, it says our products are priced per unit. 
and are considered high-end hardware solutions. What is high-end? Okay, in this case, high-end is like um, the high-quality solutions, something that is very Okay, so what we're going to do is this. You are going to write the question in the right answer. So check the answer, check the questions, and let's write it, okay? I will give you also a few minutes on this one so we can check, all right?
Okay, have you finished? Or do you need a little bit of more time? Anybody? Um, in number four, we sell okay. our products through a retail channel. Uh -huh. This is the response the to the what the, the first question. Ah, okay. So you say that for the number four, the question is going to be how will you distribute your products? And I then see. we sell a product through a reader channel. Very good. That is the answer. Nice. Anybody wants to do number one? What would be the number one? For number one. The question is, what are you selling? Very good. What are you selling? So we build quite kitchen hardware for residential kitchen customers. That would be it. What about number two? What would be the question for that one? Who are you selling to? Who are you selling to? Our customers are young North American families who want kitchen hardware that can stand the wear and tear of young children. That is correct, very good. Number three, who wants to tell the question for number three? What value do you provide your customers? Very good, what value did you provide your customers? Uh, to your customers actually has to be uh, we sell our, no, they are interested in materials that are safe for children and eco-friendly. Perfect. We know number four, so what about number five? What will be that? Uh, how will you price your product? Very good. How will you price your product? Our products are priced per unit and are considered high-end hardware solutions. Perfect, very good. Do you have any questions on this? No, teacher. Perfect. So it says uh, in exercise number eight, group work, choose a renowned national product or service. Identify its product and price strategy components. Okay, let's analyze the exercise first of all. Uh, by for first of all, do you know? Do you remember what is renowned? What is renowned? Renovado. Okay, very good. So, so, but something that is very popular that everybody knows, right? So let's start with that one. So, what products do you remember in El Salvador? Uh, from El Salvador or from other countries that are, are renowned. Give me examples of renowned products or services. Uh, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is an international company that is renowned in El Salvador. Any others? Diana. Diana, very popular as well. Always in, uh, I mean, yeah, somebody has been for a long time available here. And uh, what else? What other products or Lido. service? Lido. Lido is one of the most popular. Very good. Nice. So, and then it says identify its product and price strategy components. So, this is related to the exercise that we just made. So, here, are the questions that you can ask so you can identify. Uh, if you want to identify the price strategy components and the product uh, components, you can ask this question, how the product distributes or how the company distribute the product? Who are the company selling to? What value does the product provide to the customers? What are the companies selling? And how will the company price the product? 
Okay, so this is a very good example of how to identify product and price strategy components. So the only thing that you have to do is that, to think about, for example, Coca-Cola. How Coca-Cola distribute the product? That will be, ah, Buffalo wins. Yeah, really like that. Who are you selling to? I mean, who are, who is Coca-Cola selling to? What value does Coca-Cola provide to their customers? Uh, what is Coca-Cola selling? How will Coca-Cola price the products? Maybe the last one is kind of difficult, but if you see this exercise, you will be able to find the product and price strategy components for the products or company that you are talking about. Uh, do you have any question on how to do that? Because we're going to do that in, in, in groups. You're going to speak about one of the one of the products any product that you mentioned or any other product and ask these questions and check the answers for that one so you can identify that's the only thing that we need to do but i don't know if you have any questions on that okay if you don't have any questions on that, I'm going to do the groups right now and you're going to discuss these questions about one company or one product of a company, okay? Let's do that. Let me just check here. Let's see. All right, let's see how it goes. Okay, here we go, my friends. Please join to the breakout rooms and discuss about that.
Hello, Víctor. Ay, se me fue el internet. Ah, ok, no problem. ¿Con quién estaba para unir? Blanca Tunaca. Ah, ok, ahorita. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back, my friends. Let's see how it goes. So uh, we're going to start with the group number one, uh, where it was Blanca, Naka, uh, Mauricio, and Victor. So I'm going to listen to you. Let's see how it goes. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, we choose uh, we choose uh, uh, the brand Adobe. Okay. Uh, for the question, for the first question, what are you selling? Uh, they offer shoes with made with enough materials and durable. They offer shoes made with good enough materials and durable. You can hear me? Yes, yes, you can hear. Okay. Okay. Number uh, four. Oh, go ahead. Number four, and um, the question is um, the question is how will you price your product? Um, they distribute their product in the how stores, the main store ad hoc, and the secondary store part two. And, uh, number five, how would you distribute your product? Our product is distributed through stories advertising on social networks on television. Me? Thank you. Okay, perfect. So oh, it was interesting. It's a very popular, a very popular company. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how to try to understand how they do things. Very good. The next uh, one it was Anna and Jose Alfredo, but I, I don't know. I remember maybe you did. It was not possible. So the next one is. Uh, Juan Roberto and Silvia Patricia. Okay, uh, the product that we identify is toothbrush Colgate. Colgate. Okay. We do the next questions. Uh, how does Colgate distribute its product? Uh, they distribute the product in a lot of supermarkets like Super Selectors, Dispensa Familiar, convenience stores, pharmacies, dental clinics, and others. How the, who does Colgate it sell it to? Uh, for all people who need oral hygiene, what value does Colgate provide to customers? The toothbrush has different bristles and a lot of features. How will does Colgate price the product? They sell the product in individual toothbrush to wholesalers, retailers in their distribution center. Very good, very interesting. Also a very popular brand like Colgate and toothbrush. And it's very interesting because, for example, you mentioned that uh, on the toothbrush uh, features and things like that. And that is true. I mean, you might think that for a toothbrush, there are not many features, but actually they have. They have different uh, shapes because uh, they have research about the best way for them to clean the teeth. So it's very, very good. Thank you. Okay, the uh, next group is going to be uh, Eric Reyes and Maria Julia. Okay, coach. In, in our case, uh, we can choose the brand Yes with uh, yogurt. Um, I have a question. Yeah. First, before we start, 
uh, we can explain the five question. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, of course. Or, or pick someone. Uh, the five. This is just for that product. Okay. In this case, uh, I will start. Uh, the first is how would you distribute your product? In our case, we can select uh, social media to to share our product and we have a call center to to get a, a and in this case get a the I, I I don't remember how can I say uh, pedidos? Uh, orders. Ah, uh, orders. Yes. Or uh, orders. And we can use delivery to to uh, to the market in this case. Okay. Yeah. Okay, my my couple uh, we can explain the the second question of course okay. let's go uh, what value the, is a product is a is a distribute the the place in supermarket and retail and delivery is a etc is a uh, what are you selling? Is a uh, is a drink in provide in provide the the, the nutrient and minerals. Is a uh, drink uh, more more saludable Healthy. for yeah for uh, how you how how you how will you price your product is a add in my in my case is a add cost to the ma the materials the labels it cost the marketing uh, add, add a cost the distribution um and sum it one percent the, is the profit. Um, always is a a um compare compare it is a price the competitor and my and my price is a better price for me. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, by uh, adding adding to the answer to my uh, couple in the last question, how would you how will you price your product? Um, in my opinion, because we have a, a different uh, answer. Uh, in my case, I will divide the cost of the uh, the product uh, with the with the price with our our competition. We compare we compare the price with my competition and the cost. Um, in this way, I will took a decision and tried to get bring a, a better price to my customers. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, yeah, getting the price, uh, the method that you say is is very interesting. It's very is is very important because yes, you have to check the costs, and it's a very good idea also to check about the competition. Definitely, that is something. Very cool. Thank you. Let's see. The next group is uh, Monica and Veronica Elizabeth. 
Hi, teacher. Sorry, but I didn't have the screen, and I will stay alone too. Ah, okay. I didn't know. Okay, perfect. No problem. Okay. The, sorry. We have, no, no problem. The last group is Aida, eh, Carla, Alejandra, and Oscar. Ne. Okay, teacher. Can you listen to me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Oscar is going to ask it. Yeah. Thank you. Oscar, go ahead. <laughs> we can listen to you. Okay. Okay. The issue is the state factory in the Elon Musk is it's a property. Okay. Okay. And the factory in El Salvador, similar to Stanley distribution. Okay. How will we, how will you distribute, distribute your product? Online, face to face, in shopping center. Uh, the second, uh, who are you selling to? Uh, every person, a different agent. It's a many person. Uh, number three, what value do you provide your customer? Is it quality? Is it comfort? Quality and comfort. What are you selling? Number four, you choose uh, the high quality in maximum comfort. Number five, how will you price uh, your product? Four is quality in and durability. Uh, my my partners, sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm going to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. I'm going to continue with the, the, our product. Okay, as you can see, our product is based on shoes. Okay, in this um, occasion, you can find a quality in the material, a comfort. A, you can find with different style for different ages as well. Uh, the color is going to be different as well. Uh, it's going to depend the 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 style that you choose, and uh, you can look uh, elegant and with a good comfort in this occasion with our product. Okay. okay. Next. Now Carla is going to continue with the characteristics of our product. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, our product characteristics are similar raw material, the cost related with three lines, similar cost. The color is for office mail in three lines, the three lines, elegant design, very resistant, and similar quality. Okay. okay. This is not uh, our homework. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Very good, very good. So, and uh, this, uh, this uh, shoes uh, are, are very, very good. I mean, uh, the name of the factory is just SpaceX factory or it's just something else? Yes, it's a space. Lo que pasa es que alguien dijo a Doc ahí, entonces así le habíamos puesto. Ah, Se me okay. ocurrió en el momento cambiarle el nombre para que no dijéramos a Doc igual que el primero. Ah, ok, I got it. So, yeah, I was, I was thinking, what's that? <laughs> I, I don't no, know the shoes, I say. No, no, eh, no, no existen. Después lo vamos a hacer con Elon Musk. All oh, right. Una, ah, okay. Vamos a hacer ahí una alianza estratégica <laughs> y por la compra del internet, del Starlink, 
vamos a mandarle un par de zapatos a cada persona. Yeah, yay, yeah, they say this internet connection is Gracias. very, very fast, very nice. Yes. <laughs> very good, perfect, thank you very much. Okay, that was the last group, and it was a very good uh, job, my friends. You always uh, are presenting very nice things. I want to see what you are going to present on on Friday that we had the home, right? So on Friday, you are going to do an advertisement, a commercial for a product. So that is the homework for Friday. Good, good. So let's practice then. Uh, let me check how much time we have. Okay, let's practice uh, in general, all together. So let's speak about, what can we talk about? Do you want to speak about any topic, any, anything that you would like to speak about? So everybody gives opinion. It can okay. be. Okay, it can be anything. For example, one of the things that I'm thinking is traffic, right? Traffic is getting crazy. In mind that you are in charge of give solutions for traffic. What would you do? So in El Salvador, the traffic is better. Uh, the traffic in El Salvador is very terrible. Yeah, there are many causes for that one, but in mind that you need to provide a solution for the traffic in El Salvador. What would you do? Ah, oh, trying is a trying its solution in center traffic and the accident in center. Uh -huh. So, but what solutions would you would you like to? to do is probably the, the train a train train yes ah, okay yeah yeah the train in the uh, uh, teleferic ah okay that is another good thing yeah maybe it's very large and very expensive but it will be a very good search Maybe yeah. teacher uh, have a a control about the the sale of the cars because the street look really crowded because a lot of cars that we have in our country that is a good idea to have a control like this for selling this kind of product. Yeah, that is a very nice thing as well. So, um, yeah, there are. A lot of cars in El Salvador, right? Traveling. Another solution. Another solution is uh, move the factory in the got out the the center downtown. Is the factory is a uh, Sonsonate, is a uh, low and uh, Sudarse, is decentralization for the factory. And it's a problem. Uh, many, many cars in only place. Yeah, definitely. So if you, uh, yeah, if everybody we had the our job in in places that are not in the city, uh, definitely that will help, right? So uh, to distribute, let's say, all the traffic in other zones. Very good, interesting, nice. Yeah, what about yeah. Uh, any in, other? Uh, go ahead. In the other possible solution, pues, is, is that these uh, companies does uh, at least a uh, one day of work for home and mm. perhaps uh, different uh, companies by activity. Or, or, digamos, or different, different, different hours. Okay. Different schedules. Yeah. Actually, that is something interesting. The, the first and the second, I mean, uh, something like a different schedule, definitely, they can, that can help. Uh, I remember that the government was doing that one before. 
anyways, now it's crazy, but it's still not working. And uh, working from home is also another good solution because you don't need to go out every day, right? Or coming home at the same time that everybody's doing. So uh, definitely that would be a, a very good solution. Yeah. Any other solution that you can think of? Yes, adding to the answer to my friend uh, Oscar, we can use trains or in this case, use tunnels to release traffic in the, in the hour with more traffic. That is true. Yeah, a train, a, a tunnel sounds like a very good idea. Uh, might be a little bit expensive, but uh, if uh, if we can do many other things, of course, that would be something that we need to check. I don't know how, how expensive it's going to be, but uh, it's a very good idea. Nice. Any other idea how to solve traffic in El Uh, other maybe uh, intensify uh, a bio education because uh, always are a lot of car crashes and motor crashes. Very good. So yes, and that causes more traffic, right? So if there is an accident, oh my goodness. And the problem is that people might think that uh, if there is an accident, for example, in the chorus, only that people are really crazy, but that affects all their streets, right? Uh, because the people they see on the news, oh, there is an accident. I'm going to go in other way. So the other other highways, the other streets are also with a lot of traffic. So and now and now teacher, I drive it I drive in and so church is impossible. I drive it in Hayake, Umbre and Esen. Now, driver, and one hour. One if, hour. Uh, the shuttle, yes, the shuttle is impossible. It's possible. Eh, me daba la opción de irme por el volcán, o venirme por el volcán, o por, por ese otro lado. Pero uh, no por los shuttles. Yeah, and, and what about the time? It's because it's the best solution on time, right? So, yeah, I mean... Uh, there are some alternative roads, but everything collapses, right? So even sometimes something is happening here, but in the other side of the city is affecting that as well. So uh, yeah, it's something that is complex, it's difficult, right? Any other idea that you might think about this? Okay, let's see what happens when uh, the the new bridge, the new highway on the air that the president is going to do. Uh, how is everything after that one, right? Because they have promised a lot of things, but I don't know exactly if that is going to work, uh, how is everything going to do, um, in some things like that one. But yeah, definitely that is going to Yesterday, I told the project in the engineering. And as this is a construction and two years for, for development. It might. Two years of more traffic. Uh, let's see what happens. Yes. Yeah, traffic is crazy. But anyways, we are here, right? So. The only thing that we can do by now is to uh, wake up early. Perfect, my friends. So this was the class of tonight. We're going to check the attendance and then let's go to bed. So let's see. Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. I'm here, teacher. Good. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. 
Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Good. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present, present. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto Carlos Avetes Rivera. Hearing. Good. Sandra Anita Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Seituno Méndez. Present teacher. Good. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. En Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present teacher. Perfect. Teacher, okay, I my... wanna... Excuse me. I wanna I wanna do a question. Um I can't enter to platform. Oh my goodness, okay. So, uh -huh. eh, ¿y con qué correo Pero está probando? Don't, don't send me, don't send me the, the platform. I don't know why. Eh, ¿Y qué correo está utilizando para tratar de ingresar? El correo que siempre he usado es burgosabogados.com Sí, fíjese que es el que tengo. Y el password es el, el genérico. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ok, la voy a reportar en este momento, a ver qué nos dice, ok. Sí, porque todos los días he revisado y ahora antes de entrar acá revisé y no, no me han enviado el link para poder trabajar la plataforma. Perfecto. Ok, let me check into that one. Let ok, see. muchas gracias. Pasa feliz Perfect. noche. Igualmente. So, have a good night, everybody. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Hey, coach, coach. Uh, yeah. I'm here. I'm sorry yeah. because... Yeah, no quiero. Because I have a show in the internet. Ah, okay. Very good. Uh, no I problem. have a Thank question. You. Uh -huh, go ahead. Uh, could you remind uh, how can I say uh, in the interview uh, I, uh -huh. where, where where do you work? You said the last Class, uh, the 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 better answer, the uh, best answer. For what uh, question you say? I'm sorry. Uh, where do you work? Mm, I don't remember, but uh, yeah, where do you work? I mean, it's like asking the place where you work. Yes. Mm, yeah, I mean that that is. That is a good uh, question. I mean, the question is fine, uh, and you can tell uh, many things. I mean, I work in this place. Maybe I remember that you were speaking about some questions that you had in the interview, like tell me about yourself and things like that. Were right? Eh, sí, yo me recuerdo que había dicho. No me recuerdo muy bien si era I work in. Eh, y mencionamos nuestro lugar de trabajo, pero decíamos in or on. No me recuerdo cuál era el article que, que, usa, que se usa. Eh, sí que me acuerdo que hablábamos de cuando quiere crecer la compañía que se dice within. I want to grow within the company. 
Sí, que usted mencionó que se me, eh, era mejor y más avanzado dar esa respuesta en, un, en una entrevista. Ajá. Yo trabajo en, eh, digamos, por, ex, por ejemplo, en Claro, pero ocupó un árico de usted, no me recuerdo cuál era. I don't remember, to be honest with you. Because that one, you can say, I work for Claro. So that would be it. I work for Claro. For Claro. Huh? Or I work in, I work in Claro, no. Uh, you can say in, yeah, no, not a problem. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's okay. good. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay, have a, have a good night. So do you, have a good night. Good night. Good night. Hello, Roberto.